Hello viewers. Uh, I'm Silish, Silish David, and this is uh, Dilip Chaddaya with me with guitar. And we are so excited to see you all. And uh, I truly believe that this episode is going to bless you, and especially uh, I will say will prepare you for the times that are and that are to come. Uh, trust me, God loves you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my dear friends in Christ. God has a plan for you. He wouldn't have even uh, let you watch this episode if it was not so that he is not thinking about you. You're right there in the middle of this plan and he says, I have plans for you. I have plans for you, not for calamity, not for calamity, but to prosper and give you a hope and a future and an expected end. So nothing in the kingdom of God are going to be really unexpected, you see, because uh, the very plan of God to send his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into the world to stand and to, to, to die for our sin, to pay the penalty of our sin on the cross and be dead and be buried and then again rise up on the third day. Just think about this. If, if you really think that your uh, life uh, has no value or worth, but then the Bible has a different story to talk. It tells a different story about you and about me. A story of hope that does not disappoint. A story that God cares. So we are here to, uh, to lead you all into worship and that we'll all sing together with one heart and one mind these songs and especially uh, the song which we're going to sing the song of uh, that speaks of steadfastness it was just before the the pandemic began the coronavirus covid-19 pandemic began a week before it week, week before before the lockdown actually began the lord spoke to me from the book of psalms chapter 57 and this is what he says 57 verse 1 be merciful to me O God be merciful to me for my soul trusts in you and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by I had no idea that there was a situation like the, like this like the pandemic is going to come but then the Lord prepares us before beforehand you know he says until these calamities have passed by in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge and especially in verse 7 my heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. Awake my glory. Awake lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. And the song also talks about the rising waters. You know, ever since the pandemic began, I've heard the news reporters speak uh, to us about the present situation in terms of a tsunami, you know. I had a vision, I had a dream, uh, a very vivid dream that uh, something like this a huge wave is going to come and hit the world and nobody will really take it to heart before it actually happens but then the psalm 46 says when the waters roar when the mountains sink into it but then there will be one mountain a city and we'll see what 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 the psalm 46 talks about is it says uh, even though the earth be moved and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake and swell, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God, God says. So we will sing this song, the song which talks about being steadfast. Love is growing cold and the heart just 
just fades away But the voice behind my ears says At the dawn's break when I'm still and stay away Heaven's new call on the other side awaits His promises are still flashing up right before my gaze And the wall is still the same but I, I will be steadfast Fixing my eyes on you, oh Lord Fixing my eyes and marching along Right through what rises up against me You're never letting love will hold me up above The rising waters from beneath me Your promises as a mountain Your promises as a mountain your promises as a mountain will raise me up to the glory land At the dawn's break when I'm still and stay awake Heaven's new call on the other side of wait It's promises still flashing up right before my grace And the world is still the same but I, I will be steadfast Fixing my eyes on you Fixing my eyes and marching along Right through what rises up against me You're never adding love will hold me up above The rising waters from beneath me Your promises as a mountain Rises as a mountain Your promises as a mountain me up to the glory land, your promises as a mountain, Jesus, you're my mountain, your promises as a mountain, raise me up to the glory land. Jesus said, speaking to the children of Israel, in Matthew chapter 24 it says in verse 2 do you not see all these things my friends the question is do we not see all these things what are the things that I'm talking about if you remember the song spoke about a time when God when the people they'll be vexed with the things that happen around them frustrated angry and then they will willfully forget the things that are happening which were actually foretold by our Lord, they will say, you see, it, it, it's there in the scripture, I will show you from 2 Peter chapter 3. He says, the apostle says, Beloved, I write to you the second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder. God is stirring up our hearts, our minds now. He's reminding of the things, us of the things that he has already spoken. He says that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this, that scoffers will come in the last days first, walking according to their own lusts and saying, they will say this, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as though they were from the beginning of creation. In verse 9 he says, The Lord, but the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. The song said, Your promises which stand as a mountain. And this is the mountain that will raise us up from the waters. And it will take us, take us to the glory land. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us and not willing that any should perish that all should come to repentance in verse 12 looking looking for and hastening the coming of the day okay and again verse 13 nevertheless we according to his promise you see the promise comes again look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells and in verse 17 he says you therefore beloved since you know this beforehand be careful otherwise you also fall from your own steadfastness you see, there is a steadfastness God has imparted unto us. It talks of 
events that are going to happen. And why does he do that? Why does he do that? The book of Amos, the prophet says, I know Lord that you wouldn't do anything before telling about it to your servants. And this, at this moment, know this, that God has a plan for you. And every day, the unfolding of the plan is happening everywhere around you. Because you are right there, the center of everything that happens in the will of God. And the song that we're going to sing now is a song of assurance that you need not fear. The book of Isaiah chapter 47, the Lord says, Do not be afraid. I have called you by my name, by your name and your mind. So we will see in the coming days how God will be with us, stand with us and make us of a steadfast heart and mind. While he says this, do not be afraid, it is I. Fear not, for I am with you, fear not. by name, child you are mine, you will walk through the waters, I will be there, and through the flame, you will not no way be drowned, you will not no way be burned, for I am with you, we are not Hello, greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to another edition of Master Seed. So today we are going to discuss uh, something very important, many times which has been ignored and which has been uh, not so frequently discussed in our churches. I was just going through some uh, facts that were happening during this lockdown. One thing that has really caught my eye, one thing that has really uh, made me to uh, dig a little deep is uh, how the internet is being used during the lockdown times. We know internet is uh, uh, very powerful medium and uh, I was checking the Google Trends how things were happening uh, during the lockdown time and one thing that has uh, caught my attention is during this lockdown time the traffic to the uh, porn sites have increased dramatically people watching porn had increased dramatically during this lockdown time. Psychologists, they have a different uh, uh, opinion of 
uh, this increase this growth we say that uh, people try to you know uh, relax themselves or get uh, the tension anxiety to bring it down so they were trying to find out different means and all that but we see there is uh, so much just uh, what is being uh, visible on the surface level we can understand there are so many things uh, that are really worth paying attention first of all we know in the world the porn industry is one of the industries which is very big and very destructive we many times uh, i spoke to few young people and they asked me few questions like how to overcome this habit of pornography when we ask people in the society they would say it's just a habit or somebody saying like you know i i i am uh, used to it so in order to uh, relax myself you know and some people may say that this is a kind of addiction my dear brothers and sisters we need to see the uh, the spiritual aspect of it as well you know a problem diagnosed days problem half solved if you could able to uh, correctly identify the problem it is solved almost many times we think pornography as a kind of a habit or an addiction or a mental uh, psychological trait or emotional trait or something like that but spiritually if you see it's a bondage the spirit of lust is trying to capture captivate people bible says we know bible says if anyone looks at a woman with lustful eyes he had already committed adultery in his heart but what it is encouraging the pornography is encouraging to do adultery in the heart people can argue that it is not doing any harm to anyone no my brother and sister it is actually doing a great harm to your spirit to your mind and to your body as well if we understand in, in our spirit the bible says where your eye is that's where your heart is your eye is the lamp of your heart so the the spirit is also defiled by adultery that's what the scripture says and at the soul level people who are addicted to pornography are very seldom they were in a position to enjoy the true love with their companions people many people who are unmarried they got addicted to this and as a result their mind is corrupted their mind is corrupted they lose that uh, the sensitivity to enjoy with uh, their companion with their spouse when they get married the irony of the situation is many married people also got addicted to this pornography let me tell you one thing they are actually ruining their marital life because this is a demon it's not a psycho it's not a psychological trait it's not a habit but when you watch this pornography when when we uh hello open the doors for enemy the demon captivates the people makes them slaves captivated to to its uh, uh in, in its bondages and the married people will have a problems in their marriage 
and uh, there is no kind of a satisfaction with their spouse. They are not able to enjoy or cherish their beautiful uh, relationship with their spouse. And even body also. You see people who are addicted to porn, they are spending sleepless nights, they are having problem in their reproductive system and their physical also. Physically also they were having uh, problems, ailments. First of all we need to identify this as a spiritual problem. Because Bible clearly mentions about uh, sexual immorality. Bible clearly mentions about uh, how, how to overcome this the great danger or how to overcome this the trap of enemy. This is a trap of enemy because he lures people to catch them into captivity. He lures people. He puts the snares so that he can catch people and take them into destruction. Now we see few uh, important points how that uh, we can uh, have a victory from this addiction of pornography. First of all, keep yourself away from everything that can that is enticing you or that is distracting you. Keep yourself away from everything that is enticing you or distracting you. If we understand even the Google, the, the uh, social media that we work also works in a logic. Whatever that we search and whatever that we are uh, frequently watching, according to that because it stores our history and the, according to that keywords it keeps pushing the notifications, it keeps pushing the uh, files to for our availability. For example, if you are watching something uh, in YouTube and we would see the results appearing in our YouTube page connected to our previous search. So here, keep always yourself away from things that can entice. What we can do? You can start searching, you can start searching something connected to God, something connected to worship or anything that uh, that is away from uh, the regular trap or regular uh, selection from enemy. And second, Bible says flee from temptation. Paul writes to Timothy and says, Timothy flee from the youthful lust. Because Timothy being a man of God, even for him it was needed to flee from youthful lust. Many times what we do, rather flee from the temptation, we try to resist the temptation. We should, Bible says, we should resist the devil, and uh, but we should flee from the temptation. It includes people, situations, anything that can tempt you to sin, flee from it. Don't feel uh, offended or don't feel anything uh, right about it. Just flee. We, we know the story of Joseph, how he fled from the wife of Potiphar. He fled from the place. He did not stand and try to resist it. And third, resist the devil. The Bible says, submit yourself to God and resist the devil. It will flee from you. Resist that devil. Consider that in this trap, this captivity, this addiction is from a demon, the spirit of lust that is trying to captivate you. By knowing that, by identifying that, resist that demon. 
resist it, its activities and submit yourself to God and then the demon will flee from you. And very importantly, we have a promise. Matthew 16, 19, the Bible says, Jesus said, whatever that you bind on earth, it shall be born in heaven. Bind the activities of Satan. Many times I know people pray earnestly to come out of this addiction. They fast and pray to come out of this addiction. Many times we ask God, please bring me out of this addiction. Please bring me out of this addiction. God says, I have given you the key. Use the key. The key is you bind the activities of Saturn. You bind the activities of evil. Then it shall be bound. Then when we understand this truth, this truth will set us free. Our prayer changes. We start praying that. We start binding the, the spirit of lust that is working on us. We bind the spirit of addiction that is making us a slave to this addiction. And we proclaim the promises and we seek the grace of the Lord to come out victoriously from this addiction. My dear friends, and my dear friends, this is not a habit. It's a spiritual attack on you. Pornography is not a habit. It's a trap of enemy to catch you and to take you to hell. Know that and Resist its traps. Resist the traps of enemy. Advances of enemy. Protect yourself from destruction. And finally, when you are feeling weak, take the help of your spiritual elders. Ask somebody to pray for you. Go for a prayer closet. Go for a uh, prayer Pray together with the spiritual elders or your co, your friends, your brothers. Pray. And then God is always there to help us. His grace is sufficient in every situation that you go through. So praise the Lord and we, we will always stand victorious from the traps of heaven. Amen. Welcome. Uh, we would like to uh, share with you on the seed of faith. And therefore, as we start, I'd like us to pray. Father, we thank you for this chance that you have given us to share uh, with your people, our viewers, whatever they are. Even as we start uh, this program, I pray that you will speak to each one of us, even through the message in this word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, Jesus, our Lord in his teachings, uses an analogy of the mustard seed. Now, the mustard seed is the smallest of all the seeds, and he uses this to illustrate the growth of the kingdom. Therefore, as we share this message on the seed of faith, I would like us to read Matthew 13, verse 31 to 32. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Now, Jesus Christ, before he shared um, this parable with his disciples, he had already told them about a parable of uh, this, this, the sower and the seed. Now, this is in the beginning of this chapter. And that's why now, when it comes to the verse 31, he, he now talks to them regarding the, the power of a seed in the kingdom of God. 
And this is why we need to relate and understand uh, the message of, of the kingdom regarding this, the seed. Now, so in verse, uh, in verse 3 of the same chapter to verse 8, Jesus had uh, told the, 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 the multitudes, he had told the multitudes about uh, so, and he was using the picture of uh, so, uh, during those times, the period, uh, I mean, they were farmers and therefore they could relate very well with the message of uh, so, uh, going out to sow the seed. So let's go through uh, these verses from verse 3 to verse 8. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the falls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Now this is this is the picture, uh, and this is a, the message that went out to the multitudes uh, to the common people but then you see uh, during that time they didn't understand uh, even the disciples did not understand uh, this uh, parable and therefore um, uh, Jesus had to expose them when they went deeper I mean when they went in private to um, to explain now um, the disciples asked Jesus privately to explain to them the meaning of the parable. Now, he, he said that the sower, the sower sow is the word, the word of God. The seed is the word of God. The field are the hearts of people. Now, so he went further to, when they asked him privately to explain, he went further now to the disciples to explain to them what the, uh, the, the, the parable meant. And so I want us to go uh, understand in his explanation he gave four uh, categories of, uh, of, 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 of the earth or the ground. Uh, now in these categories we'll, we'll go one by one. The first category is whereby the seed, as we have seen, the seed uh, fell by the wayside. And he explained in in Matthew chapter 13, verse 19. Verse 19 says, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his hand. So, so, so some seed fell on the wayside, and he, he shows that this is similar to a, the heart of a person, who then hears the word, but then uh, doesn't understand. And I was asking, okay, doesn't understand. So if you don't understand, then it's easy for that, to, for whatever you have had, to be taken away. So this is the first uh, category of the ground that was receiving seed by the wayside. Now the second category is receiving seed into the stony places. And he went and explained. The same is he that heareth the word, and immediately with joy receiveth it, yet have not root in himself, but endureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the world, by and by he is offended. This is the second category of the ground, and um, we have said the ground is the heart of part of a person. The ground is. Uh, the, the people receiving the word and therefore if you are there and you are listening to us uh, the word that comes therefore finds space in your heart and that's why it's important for us to take uh, to take note of the second explanation by our Lord Jesus Christ that some seed uh, fell in stony places and as he explained and as we have read now 
this is whereby the word uh, doesn't find root in our hearts, in our lives. So remember the first one, the receiving seed by the wayside, where the, there is no understanding, the birds came and took. The second, receiving seed by stony places. Now, those those stony places, there's no ground, there's no depth, there's no, uh, there's no way the roots can go further to be able to ground the, 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 the person. And therefore, the, when we are given an analogy, the, the persecution came and the word uh, becomes an offense. Then, number three, is receiving seed among thorns. And he explained uh, in the verse that follows. Is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. Amen. Now, <laughs> the thorns pushed uh, the receiver to the extent that they become unfruitful. The word was there, the ground was there, but then the cares, the of, cares this of this world. And, and Jesus says that the moment the cares overtook the, the word, even though there was a ground, though they had the word, then now they become unfruitful. So there is a very strong connection with the seed and being fruitful. We, when we sow the seed, our expectation is to receive fruit out of the seed. When the seed of faith is sown in us, and that is the word of God, the expectation is fruit. So faith bears fruit, and that's important for us to understand. So the three categories uh, were unfruitful, they were productive. Um, Therefore, the final one uh, in the explanation of our Lord Jesus Christ is receiving seed in, into the good ground. And it says, Is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty? Therefore, this is the ground that. Uh, this and this is a heart that received the word of God and then to became productive and fruitful. Mm -hmm. So I would like uh, I would like us to understand that Jesus is speaking to us today, and therefore, as we finish, um, um, just note that we need to open our hearts to be able to receive that which God is saying. And the seed is the word of God. If we are receptive to the word of God, then would be able to become productive and the expectation that and, and, and what God uh, would expect from us is for us to receive that which he has. Finally therefore uh, in the second part of this message we will therefore get to understand then how do we grow our faith so that we become productive. How do we grow our the seed that we have received so that we become productive. I would like uh, uh, Rhoda to pray for us even as we conclude uh, this part one. Let us pray. My Father, thank you because of this first part of your message and your word. We pray that you are going to be with the listeners, that even as uh, they listen to your word, that it shall have a uh, ground to grow. And even as we continue with the second part, that you are going to bless all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. See you next time. Thank you. Hello, good day. I'm Elder McCoy Smith of St. James Church of God in Christ. I just want to do this little video to share with you how COVID changed my life. I was restricted with COVID-19 for two months. I was real sad and lonely but with the help of God, God has brought me through this, this, this COVID thing. And I'm telling you, if it wasn't God's help and God's mercy, I probably would have been still 
still suffering. But with people praying for me and with God, I'm telling you, I was being, I was blessed. I came back from Africa in Ghana in the month of February, and in the month of March, I was helping my son trying to renew his passport. Not knowing that he was contract with it. And I was driving his vehicle, waiting outside for him while he go inside and trying to take care of his business. And then he told me he had contracted the disease and was going back and forth to the doctor. I didn't pay that no mind until I just started feeling weak, tired, I can't breathe. One day I get out the house and I go to the food bank and I collect some food for the neighborhood and I come back and on my way back I just feel so sick. So I went to pass the food out to the neighborhood and I give it all to them and I came back that Wednesday I was just so, so sick and not feeling good. I thought I could just lay in the sofa and just get over it. Thursday, it, it was unbearable. And I said maybe Friday, it would be a little better. Saturday, it, it didn't get no better Saturday. So Saturday night, my wife brought me to the doctor. Dropped me off at the doctor. And I went inside and the doctor start doing some tests on me, running all kind of breathing tests, doing, doing a lot of tests. And then they had told me that I contract the disease, COVID, I got trace of pneumonia and that. And most possible that my wife, she might have it too. But tell you a long story. We have some chicken in the yard and we let the rooster out. And, and the rooster was running around in the yard. And the rooster was living on the back porch. So that rooster would wake up three o'clock every morning and making all that crowing noise. So apparently my wife said she couldn't take that no more. So she leave out the bedroom and went to the front bedroom to start sleeping. And I was in the back bedroom by myself sleeping because she said, that's my rooster, I have to deal with it. And when I get to the hospital, I told the doctor, and she said, that rooster saved my wife's life from not getting it because she's trouble with breathing condition and she got all kind of sickness, you know, like me, diabetes, high blood pressure, but she got asthma and breathing problem too. So with my high blood pressure and my diabetes, when I got the corona, I started praying to God because I know with God's help and his mercy, I could get over it. I could get over it. And so by your stripes you are healed. But I got to quarantine for 14 days. And I stayed in the house for 14 days. 14 days I stayed inside for. And I didn't go nowhere. I just stayed in there in the one room, looking at television, praying, doing Bible study, doing churches, doing everything in that room, eat, and everything. That That's the master bedroom. I got my bathroom and everything up in there. And after the 14 days, I started coming out and, and moving around in the house a little bit. My wife done wash everything in the sofa, the bed, wipe down everything, clean down everything that I come in contact with in the house. So I, I came out and I waited the next 14 days, which was 28 days. And I said, well, I'm going back to get a test. But I didn't really want to go back to get the test. but. I said, I'm going back, and a week later, I'll go back and get the test. That's three weeks after the 14 days, and I went back on a test positive still for COVID. See, I got to quarantine again. I, I, you, could you see how upset 
I was. And I was very upset again about that because I got to go back in quarantine again for the next 14 days. So I go back in quarantine for 14 more days. And I'm telling you, oh my God, God has just blessed me, people praying for me. A couple members, I think two members from my church, they had died from it. My sister in New York, she had died. And a bunch of my friends and family, I died from COVID. A lot of the bishop in my church, superintendent, pastor. In my national church, I die, you know. So I just thank God, you know, even my neighbor in my neighborhood, I die. So I just thank God for blessing me, blessing my household. Finally, my son, he got over it. It didn't take him that long to get over it. And it just, we use old-fashioned remedy. I, I didn't, I'm not going to tell you, I was just praying, I read the Bible. I use remedy. I got leaves, ginger and stuff, and I would make this potion, and I would stick my head underneath this blanket and keep it underneath it with all this steam twice a day and just, just cover over my head with a blanket on the table, kneel over it, and I just trying to kneel most of the heat as I can, drink a lot of hot tea. Well, I've been drinking hot tea, you know, because I love tea and coffee, hot liquid, and I do a lot of that. And I'm telling you, God, God has still blessed me. Sometime, even today, I still got short of breath where I got to stop and take a breath, or sometimes I got to go pump the thing my mouth do, my healing treatment, my breathing treatment. And even if I'm mowing the grass outside, you know, I still got hard breathing where I got to slow down and stop and all that. But I'm still praying that God, God will totally, clear, not just heal my body, but heal everybody's body that's in this COVID. We will just come to a perfect healing. And that's not just me, but, you know, I remember Paul said, he has seen a crown of righteousness that's laid up, not just for him. Remember, he did not just see the crown laid up just for him. He see laid up laid up for all the saints, a crown of righteousness. And I just pray healing for all, all the saints of God in Christ that's going through this COVID thing right now because it was not an easy thing to know that my sister, I died. And I couldn't go to the funeral, my sister. And all I seen was the hearse with our body in it. Just the hearse with our body in it. And they bring it to the cemetery, two people. And the pastor said the word and lay out the rest. My neighbor who was at the church who died, a good friend of mine, he supported me every time I go overseas on a mission trip. He called me and all that, and we talk. He called my wife, checked up on my wife, make sure she all right. His wife's still not doing good. She's still crying every day, and that about two months now. But I'm telling you, the, the COVID is still real, and it's still alive here in America, but I'm just keeping myself away from it, or from outside. I'm not afraid because I know that God he give you time on this earth and he's not going to cut your time short or nothing like that. So I'm just telling everyone that have a testimony that the COVID, they get over the COVID. It's a testimony. It's a testimony not just for you, but for your family, for your loved one, for your household. That God is great and God is good. God is watching over you. He's protecting you. Today is Sunday morning over here. We just finished with church. And we're doing church online. And I just want to share with you that been with this COVID twice. For as long as I'm, as, for that long period of time. For that long period of time. 
I have it. You know, I just want to tell God thank you for today. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling good. But I still stay away from people. And I still stay away from crowd. I still limit myself to where I go. I still limit myself to who I go around. You know, because that's wisdom. God gave us wisdom and knowledge. And we got to use that wisdom God gave us. You know, so if you have COVID or you know someone have COVID, you just pray. You just pray and pray that God will. God will be done on this earth and in their life. You know, nevertheless, God, your will be done in my life, in my family life. And I just thank God for each and every one that's on the international prayer movement. That I could share my testimony with you. I'm Ellen McCoy Smith from St. James Church of God in Christ from Louisiana, New Orleans. I live here in New Orleans. I got my church here. And I just tell you, thank God, and I ask you to continue to pray for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray that you will speak to our hearts through your Spirit. Prepare us, O oh God. Prepare our hearts to listen to your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear Church, this is my joy to share with you the Word of God today. Let's turn to John chapter 4, verse 35. Do you not say there are yet four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, that they are white for harvest. This is Jesus talking to his disciples and tells them, You say that there are another four months for the harvest, but I say to you that the harvest is already prepared. The fields are already white for harvest. But all that you need to do is lift up your heads, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. Then you will realize this harvest is ready. I would like to look at another scripture. Let, let's look at Matthew chapter 9 verse 36 and 37. I'll read it for you. Seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. If you look at the previous verse, that is verse 35, it, it ends with this, And healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Then he looked at large crowds of people and he healed. And then he looked at them as the set of people who are distressed and dispirited. Remember these two terms, distressed and dispirited. And then in connection with it, the Lord says, the harvest is plentiful. In connection with it, the Lord says, the harvest. Don't you realize that in this world, it is exactly the same situation that is prevailing due to pandemic? The whole world, this is one of such kind that the whole world is in distress. And, and proud and humble, rich and poor, unlike, together, rich and poor together, they are all under stress, they are all distressed and dispirited. And the Lord says, the harvest is ready now. But what shall we do as a church? The, the Lord expects the church to realize this. And, and as a church, what shall we do? Because the, the, the harvest is plentiful, shall we, shall we get into the field? Shall we do something? Yes, the Lord does expect us to do something. But before that, the Lord says, lift up your eyes, lift up your heads and look on the fields. Lift up your heads, lift up your eyes. But why does any person lift up his eyes? If you look at Psalms 
chapter 121 verse 1 and 2 chapter 121 verse 1 and 2 i will lift up my eyes to the hills where does my help come from my help comes from the lord the maker of heaven and earth so do you understand why does a person lift up his eyes he lift lifts up his eyes for help the Lord says, you lift up your heads for help because you need to realize that you cannot do anything in this situation. You know, only a humble person waits. Only a humble person lifts up his head. You remember the last commandment that Jesus gave to his disciples when he was ascending up to the Father? He said, wait, tarry in Jerusalem till you are clothed with power from on high. Waiting is such an amazing thing that a proud man cannot do. You remember in 1 Samuel chapter 13 where, where Samuel told Saul to wait for him to come and do that offering. Saul couldn't. Saul waited for a particular time and then he had his own reasons and then he started offering. Here, in that, in that situation, Samuel represents the power of the Holy Spirit. As a prophet, he represents the Spirit of God. And do you wait for the Spirit of God? Why? You need to realize in your waiting that you are so weak that you cannot do anything by yourself. And only in your weakness. It's an amazing thing. Paul says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, he says, I will all the more boast in my weaknesses because, no, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. This is the boasting of Paul that he rejoices and boasts in his weakness. He realizes he is weak because the power of Christ will dwell in his weakness. And because we are weak, we wait for the power of Holy Spirit. Do you realize that we need the power of the Holy Spirit as a church in a situation like this? We all know that we are in the last days. But do you remember all those magnificent promises that the Lord make, that the Lord made and gave to the church? In Joel where he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, they shall dream dreams, your old men shall shall dream dreams, young men shall see visions. And in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, 2, 3, he says, See, behold, there is darkness upon the earth and deep darkness upon the people, but take courage, be strong. Understand this, that the light of the Lord shall shine upon the church and the glory of the Lord will rest upon the church. Arise and shine, your light has come. Your glory, the glory of the church shall return to it. I would like to close this with, with one scripture. You remember in 1 Samuel chapter 4, there was this boy who was named after an incident. When, when the spirit of the Lord, when the ark of the Lord has been taken away and the glory of the Lord has departed from Israel, when the boy, when the child was born, that boy was named Ichabod, which means the glory of the Lord has left. The glory of the Lord has departed from Israel. The ark of the Lord has been taken away. But amazingly, in chapter 6, verse 13, I'll read it for you. In 1 Samuel, chapter 6, verse 13, Now the people of Beth Shemesh were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley, and they lifted up their eyes and saw the ark and were glad to see it. It is at the wheat harvest, it is at the harvest time, the, the spirit of the Lord is returning to the church. The ark of the Lord is returning, the glory of the Lord which, was, which has departed shall return to the church. Do you remember that promise that the, the later glory of the church shall be much more than the former one? Even if it if, even if it is delayed, even if it is, if if it tarries, wait for it. 
Habakkuk says, wait for it. Wait in your closets. Wait in your private rooms. On your knees. Wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is going to return His glory upon the church, which is much, much more, much, much greater than the former one. Then the, all, the whole world will see and there shall be a great returning of His people into His kingdom. May God bless this world. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good to see you again for this month. The prophetical word, what God gave me for this month is the supernatural dominator. Let me, let me say it again. The supernatural dominator. So you can ask me, Pastor, what do you mean by the supernatural dominator? So let me give you the definition for dom to dominate and and for the supernatural so whatever you see around you is natural whatever you can't see is supernatural in other words the natural the natural what you see around is dominated by the supernatural so let's get back into Genesis Genesis verse chapter 1 verse 26 God made us in his image and, and in his likeness. The reason why God created us in his image and in his likeness because he want us to dominate. He want us to rule over the earth, the animals, birds and everything that is creeping on this earth. So he put the dominating power inside of us. In other words, the reason he want us to dominate because we are like him. We are made in His image. I don't want to get much more deeper. So I just want to keep it light. Because this is the message. The prophetical word for this month. So when, when the Bible says the image. You are the exact image of God. The Bible says the likeness. You resemble God. The image is you are, you are a spiritual being like God. And the likeness. Is something you represent is character is resemblance is is ab all about him on this earth so when God made you in his image and in his likeness you are created to dominate this earth so you can ask me pastor what you want me to dominate your situation your situation trust me you are you are born into this world to dominate any circumstances in other words you are born to change your society and you're still you're you are still still struggling in your own life sorry for that let me let me say it again you are born to change the circumstances of your society but you are still suffering in your own life let me tell you uh, with the supernatural power that is living inside of you i want you to tap it tap into the supernatural power bring it out manifest it manifest it change your life and change the life of the people around you and how we are going to do it i'm going to i'm going to definitely teach you how to do it don't worry about it god also told me how to do it the supernatural power what you carry is god's power the omnipotent the omnipresent the omniscient power of god so you have the same power of God living inside of you. By using that power, you just go and dominate any situation. Let's not talk about healing, miracle, all those things are tapped into the supernatural power. When I was checking the word for dominator, the word says, the dominator is the one who dominates any events, any situation. It doesn't matter. He, he is there in that place to dominate a situation. So when you see a problem next to you, next door, you are the changer. So how are you going to do it? You're going to do it with the help of the Holy Spirit. And so let me, let me say it again. See, when Adam sinned, the dominating power, the supernatural power was lost, 
which was living within himself and when jesus came we got back the supernatural power and if you read in romans 5:17 it says we have received the abundance grace and the gift of righteousness so that we can reign in life we can reign in life in other words we can reign in life through jesus christ just because of adam's one man's trespass we the death and sin came into this world likewise just because we have jesus the salvation of god inside of us the christ our personal savior we once again we get back the supernatural dominating power and in second Corinthians 5:17 We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. In other words, the old things have passed away. So every situation that is around you, it's passed away because why? Once without God, the situation manifested into your life. But now with God, you're going to break all the situation. You're going to destroy all the situation. Trust me when God is with you, you can destroy any situation if you're sick believe in the supernatural dominating power that is inside of you which is given through jesus christ it is a gift when you start meditating on it when you start thinking on it the supernatural dominating power will manifest you you can say why pastor is using the word dominating power because that is a reason why you were created you were created to dominate the earth In the book of Romans chapter 3 it says the whole world is waiting for the sons of God to be manifested the sons of God to be manifested for what why sons of God to be manifested for so that the whole world can be saved in this corona time let me tell you something my brothers and my sisters God wants you to step out as sons of God and daughters of God and to change bring some change in this world you have the miracle power of jesus you have the healing power of jesus the word from a prophet is powerful trust me you have the supernatural power of god when you see i don't i'm not asking you to fight if you don't have confident i tell you if you know that you have the supernatural power develop a confident so that you can go and heal this corona virus people who are affected by corona virus any diseases trust me let me let me pray for you guys father i pray in the name of jesus may the supernatural dominating power that is inside of every believer shall manifest from now on in the name of jesus i pray i release the supernatural manifestation power into you stay blessed everybody